Could it be that Satan has a buffet? What if this buffet was open on street corners, shopping malls, and in homes all across the world? What if millions of Christians were unknowingly eating at this buffet, destroying their bodies, and violating God's laws of health? In this video, we will discover what the Bible says about unclean meats, alcohol, and more. Hi, this is Dustin with Hope Through Prophecy. If you'd like to better understand Bible prophecy, please subscribe and hit the bell icon below. God loves us so much that He has revealed the best foods to eat and the foods to avoid. He wants us to be healthy and happy with a clear mind to serve Him well. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. And we can be sure that what we eat and drink does matter to God. Therefore, whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. We are holistic beings, and what we eat affects our body and mind, which affects our relationship with God. God is our Creator, and who better than our Creator to tell us how to care for our bodies? Fortunately, our Creator has given us an owner's manual, the Holy Bible. Today, we will refer to that owner's manual and discover God's nutrition plan designed to care for our bodies and give us optimal health. But first, we will visit the competition, Babylon's Buffet, a way of eating and living designed to destroy your body and mind and even rob you of eternal life. We will consider the different sections of its menu, the entrees, the side dishes, the beverages, and the extras. I want to first say this. I know this message may be a bombshell, a surprise to many of you, and I know that diet can be a sensitive topic. I also know many sincere, loving Christians who are not yet practicing what we will now see from the Bible, and I don't judge their hearts. God will only hold us responsible for what we know or had the chance to know. So let us now go to the Bible with the goal to glorify God and how we eat and live. In Leviticus chapter 11, God reveals to us which animals are acceptable to eat and which are not. First, God reveals the land animals that are forbidden. Among others, this list includes the camel, the rabbits, and brace yourselves for this one, friend, the swine. Yes, the pig and all associated pork products including sausage, pepperoni, bacon, and ham, are forbidden by God. Was this just an arbitrary decision by God? Is He trying to keep good food from us? Not at all. God created our bodies, and He knows what is best for us. You see, God created the pig to be a scavenger, almost like nature's garbage can. A pig will eat almost anything, including feces and even its own young. So pigs serve a very important purpose in this world, but they are not meant to be eaten. According to the Bible, the only land animals that can be eaten are those that have a split hoof and chew the cud. This includes animals such as the cow, goat, deer, and lamb. Consider this short clip from Pastor Joel Osteen. I do not endorse Joel or all of his doctrines, but his words in this clip are biblical, science-based, and true. Ham, bacon, pepperoni, these are some of the things that the scripture tells us we should not eat. The ushers have already locked the doors. <laughs> and of course, this has to do with anything that comes from a pig, a hog, a swine. And I know some of you love pork chops. You love ham and cheese sandwiches. I grew up on all that. I love bacon. But for our health's sake, we have to be willing to make some changes. God knows what's best for us. And back in the Bible days, the pig was considered unclean. It was never considered a source of food. And one of the main reasons why was the pig will eat anything. A pig eats waste and garbage. This is kind of gross, but a pig will eat its own dead child. A pig will eat other sick and infected animals. They're scavengers. And what's interesting is the pig has one of the quickest 
and porous digestive systems of any animal. It takes only four hours, and that's not good. Because the digestive system is so quick and so poor, many times the toxins from the food are not properly eliminated, and they are stored in the pig's fat. That means that pig can eat all kinds of filth and garbage. It can eat other infection. Four hours later, it's sent to the slaughter and butchered. In a few days, it's on your plate at home. You're having ribs. The problem is the toxins were never properly eliminated from the pig. On the other hand, the animals that God says are okay for us to eat, like cow, lamb, deer, buffalo, these animals eat fresh, clean vegetation. Their digestive system is much more sophisticated. In fact, a cow basically has three stomachs. And that fresh, clean vegetation is processed through a digestive system that takes 24 hours. Think about it. 24 hours versus 4 hours. Would you rather eat an animal that eats waste and filth or an animal that eats fresh, clean vegetation? An animal that poorly processes the food and stores the toxins in its fat? or an animal that properly eliminates the toxin from his body. I made changes, not only for my health's sake, I made changes to honor God. As Joel mentioned, we should avoid these foods for our health's sakes and to honor God. When it comes to marine animals, God directs that only animals with both fins and scales can be eaten. This would include fish such as salmon and tuna, creatures such as catfish, lobster, and shrimp are forbidden, and even called an abomination. Pastor Osteen speaks briefly about these creatures as well. Something else the Bible tells us we should stay away from is any kind of shellfish. Shrimp, crabs, clams, oysters, lobsters. Again, but y'all quit being so rebellious today. I'm ruining all y'all's lunch. These are animals that are scavengers. Do you know they live at the bottom of the water and they eat waste? They eat the excrement of other animals? And I love fried shrimp, but when I think about what that shrimp eats for dinner, it's just not that appetizing anymore. As Joel mentioned, these animals are scavengers. They help keep the ocean clean, but were not designed to be eaten. In regards to birds, Leviticus 11 goes on to prohibit eagles, vultures, and several others, while birds such as chicken and turkey are not forbidden. Some may say, but Dustin, those are Old Testament laws just for the Jews. We don't have to keep those anymore. Let's talk about this. For one, Leviticus 11 is not the first place in the Bible that makes the distinction between clean and unclean meats. In fact, Noah was directed to take seven of each clean animal and two of each unclean animal onto the ark, long before the Jewish nation even existed. You shall take with you seven of every clean animal, a male and his female, two each of animals that are unclean, a male and his female. You see, the original diet given to human beings in the Garden of Eden was plant-based. It was not until after the flood that God allowed humans to eat meat, but He specified which were clean and which were unclean. God gave these laws to humans because He knows what is best for us and our bodies. We have the same human bodies as the people in the Old Testament, and these unclean meats affect our bodies in the same way. Also, breaking these health laws is a violation of the Sixth Commandment, Thou shalt not kill. When we place harmful items in our body, we are slowly killing ourselves. Not surprisingly, modern science confirms the negative effect that pork, for example, has on the body. In a 2013 investigation, Consumer Reports tested 198 samples of pork products nationwide and found that nearly 70% were contaminated with potentially harmful bacteria. And the World Health Organization has even classified processed meats, including bacon, salami, ham, and hot dogs, as a Group 1 carcinogen, which is an item that causes cancer. Some might even say, but I've been eating these things all my life, and I feel just fine. The Bible warns, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. 
Diseases, ailments, and early deaths caused by consuming harmful items can take years to set in, and many of these lifestyle diseases can even be transferred down to our innocent offspring. The good news is, if we change our diet, our body's cells can miraculously heal and repair themselves. But the sooner we make these changes, the better. Did Christians in the New Testament also avoid eating unclean meats? Peter received a vision with all kinds of creatures being lowered on a blanket, and he heard a voice that said, kill and eat. Carefully notice Peter's response. But Peter said, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything common or unclean. You see, Peter, living after the time of Jesus' resurrection, understood the Bible teaching that we are not to eat meats that are unclean. So why was Peter told to kill and eat? We see the answer in Acts 10.28. God has shown me that I should not call any man common or unclean. The dream was not about eating meat. The purpose of this dream was to show Peter that the Gentiles, or non-Jews, should not be considered unclean. Some sincere Christians quote 1 Timothy 4, 3-4, For every creature of God is good, and nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving. Is this verse really saying that we can eat anything? Skunks, rats, swine, or anything we want? Not at all. In Paul's day, it was common for me to be sacrificed to idols. Referring to this, another verse says, Eat whatever is sold in the meat markets, asking no questions for conscience sake. In other words, the meat did not become evil even if it was sacrificed to idols. So when 1 Timothy 4.3 mentions that every creature of God is good and nothing is to be refused if received with thanksgiving, it is referring to meat that has been sacrificed to idols, not to unclean meats that God has already forbidden. The Bible does not contradict itself. Romans 14 is a similar passage, also referring to meat sacrificed to idols. If there were any doubts remaining on whether eating pork and other unclean meats is a sin, this next verse makes it crystal clear. Referring to the future coming of Jesus, Isaiah says, Behold, the Lord will come with fire, and by his sword the Lord will judge all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many, those who sanctify themselves and purify themselves, eating swine's flesh and the abomination, and the mouse shall be consumed together. While this verse may be strong, we must be clear on how serious this issue is to God. Those who continue to eat the foods that God has declared to be unclean will be destroyed at His second coming. So, what else is being served at Babylon's buffet? We will now consider the side dishes, fat and blood. This shall be a perpetual statute throughout your generations and all your dwellings. You shall eat neither fat nor blood. The Bible is clear that the fat and blood of animals is strictly forbidden. The Bible reveals to us that the life of the flesh is in the blood. And science confirms that impurities and diseases of animals can be found in their fat and blood. There is a reason that God forbids these items to protect us. Babylon's Buffet also has a beverage menu. The Bible describes these harmful drinks. Wine is a mocker, strong drink is a brawler, and whoever is led astray by it is not wise. Notice that the Bible tells us that whoever is led astray by alcohol is not wise. According to Medical News Today, researchers from San Diego State University reveal that their findings suggest that even a single alcoholic drink can impair our ability to make decisions, though we're not aware of it. So even a single drink causes our minds to be impaired and led astray. Who has woe? Who has sorrow? Who has contentions? Who has complaints? Who has wounds without cause? Who has redness of eyes? Those who linger long at the wine, those who go in search of mixed wine, do not look on the wine when it is red, when it sparkles in the cup, when it swirls around smoothly, at last it bites like a serpent and stings like a viper. The Bible does not paint a positive picture of alcohol. 
It does not take long to look at our society and see the disastrous effects that alcohol has had on families and communities. It is even more important for us as Christians living in the last days to completely avoid alcohol. For Jesus washed us from our sins in his own blood and made us kings and priests to his God and Father. And the Bible says, It is not for kings, O Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes intoxicating drink, lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the justice of all the afflicted. Let us purify our lives from anything that would get between us and God. Before we visit God's diner, let us consider just a few more items served at Babylon's buffet. We need to talk briefly about nicotine and caffeine. Although legal, both of these items are drugs that stimulate the body's central nervous system. Both are addictive and harmful to the body. The Bible warns us about placing anything in our body that would defile it. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Caffeine, often found in coffee, soda, and energy drinks, along with nicotine, often found in cigarettes and other tobacco products, should be completely avoided. Instead of these habits, we should make sure to drink plenty of pure, clean water. Let us honor God with the body that he has lent to us. We have learned about Babylon's buffet and how Satan tries to destroy our body and mind and separate us from God through diets. These items on Babylon's buffet are forbidden by God. But friends, whenever God helps us take something away, he always replaces it with something better. Our loving creator knows exactly what is best for our health and happiness. Let us now take a visit to God's diner. What diet did God originally create for human beings? And God said, See, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of all the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed, to you it shall be for food. Yes, in the original Eden paradise that God created for mankind, he provided a plant-based diet. God knows that this is the ideal diet for the human race. In fact, modern science confirms this fact. An article entitled, Vegans are the healthiest and may outlive us all, says study on menshealth.com, discusses a recent study by the Journal of Nutrition showing that vegans have higher level of antioxidants, omega-3 fatty acids, and anti-inflammatory properties in their bodies. The importance of a plant-based diet made up of fruits, vegetables, grains, and nuts is even greater in today's world. Hormones, drugs, and unsanitary conditions plague the modern meat industry, laying the foundation for cancer and early death. A 15-year-long study by Oxford University tracked 60,000 British men and women, 2,246 of them being vegan. The study found that cancer incidence was 19% less in vegans compared to other diets. God's way is the best way. But I won't get enough protein from that diet, some might say. This is a common misconception. In 2013, a study compared the nutrient intake of over 71,000 vegetarians, non-vegetarians, and vegans. This study, published by the Journal of the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, was the largest study to date of its kind. It found that on average, vegans and vegetarians actually get 70% more protein than they need on a daily basis. But perhaps the most compelling study of all is found right in the Bible. Did you know that Daniel chapter 1 has been recognized as the world's oldest health study? After being taken captive to Babylon, Daniel and the rest of the prisoners were weak and gaunt. King Nebuchadnezzar ordered that all of these men be given a rich diet full of meat and wine. Daniel requested that he and his friends be given a simple plant-based diet for a span of 10 days and then be compared with the other captives. Daniel's request was granted and after 10 days, the Bible records that Daniel and his friends who partook of the plant-based diet were brought before the king. What were the results of this study? 
Daniel and his friends were found to be healthy, strong, and 10 times wiser than the greatest wise men and astrologers in all of Babylon, God's way is always the best way. While the Bible does not require a plant-based diet, it is the ideal. My appeal to you today is to at least give up the things that God forbids, including unclean meats, animal blood and fat, and drugs such as caffeine and nicotine. However, I do encourage you to consider adopting a plant-based diet, which is God's ideal for us. After all, in heaven, we will all have a meat-free diet, for there will be no more death in heaven. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. This all may be new or even overwhelming to some of you, but please remember that God gives us this information because He knows what is best for us and desires us to be happy, healthy, and to have eternal life. Fortunately, God does not ask us to make these changes on our own. If He did, I would still be eating the same things I always ate, because I'll be honest, I liked these foods, I enjoyed them, and I couldn't have changed in my own strength. But the good news is, God promises to give us the power to obey all He asks of us, if we will just make the decision to obey Him. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And if we decide to follow God's laws, He will not only help us to obey, but will even teach us to want to obey. For it is God who works in you, both to will and to do for His good pleasure. Yes, as you continue to eat a healthier diet, you will actually learn to love and appreciate these new foods. God will change your heart if you surrender it to Him. Plus, our sleep will be sounder, our minds will be sharper and clearer, and we will live longer, more productive lives for God. We only have one life to live, friend. Let's make it count. God is calling us, He is calling you, to glorify Him in how you eat, drink, and live. And everyone who has this hope in Him purifies himself, just as He is pure. If our hope is in Jesus, if we love Him, we will purify ourselves of anything in our diet that is not good and pleasing in God's eyes. Dear friend, if you would like to make a decision to follow God's health laws with His help and glorify God with how you eat and drink, please write in the comment section below, Lord, I choose to glorify you with my diet. Praise God! I will put resources in the description below that will help you to have a balanced diet and lifestyle that glorify God. And make sure that you watch the playlist Hope Through Prophecy by clicking the link below, which will reveal many powerful Bible truths and help you prepare for the soon return of Jesus. Please like, share, and subscribe if this video was helpful. But most importantly, friends, keep your eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith.